This video is all about eSIMS. So if you want to get to know the basics of eSIMS in less than 10 minutes, stay tuned. eSIMs or embedded SIMs are already on their way to fully replace the traditional SIM card. But beside from the consumer device use cases, the eSIM is used in machine-to-machine -machine communication as well. In the very first part of our RSP and eSIM basics training, my colleague and our eSIM expert Olga Ketla is covering everything you need to know about eSIMs. So, let's have a look. Okay, let's dive in. So, why do we have the eSIM? We'll talk about the third wave, the challenges, the ESC definitions, the EOSSC or eSIM, so you probably heard of it, and finally the value chain of the eSIM. The so-called third wave is coming. This was um, on the headlines of um, some manufacturers, and uh, you've probably seen a lot in the business magazines, like uh, so the announcements like this, where uh, it's saying so that tens of billions of data spotting devices will be connected to, uh, to the internet in the future, in the near future. So this uh, is uh, the, our world today. Yes, yeah, some people call the, uh, the invention of the mobile phones the third wave, uh, the first wave, sorry. Then uh, the uh, smartphones, actually the second wave. And uh, then nowadays with the IoT or the Internet of Things, connected devices, this is the so-called uh, third wave. So you can see it in the smart cities, in the M2M devices, the consumer devices. This is our world today. But what are the challenges uh, which uh, the traditional SIM has to face? So the first challenge I call it the physical one, or the vulnerability, lack of space. Actually, the devices are quite often located in the diverse and unsupervised locations. They are often subject of external influences, the weather, temperature, and vibration. So, for example, just imagine the oil pipe in the ocean or the wind turbine somewhere in the middle of Siberia. So, you can imagine the weather and the temperatures are different. <laughs> uh, yes, and vibration. Vibration in the car is a different one as uh, you have it just in a standalone uh, device. Yes, uh, and uh, sometimes the SIM cards, they need to be protected and kept in a secure part of the device uh, well, where it will not be damaged or open to the theft. And sometimes the devices are quite small, so they have a limited space inside. So all of this uh, leads to this first challenge, how to uh, increase protection of uh, highly vulnerable devices without requiring too much space. The second, device, uh, second challenge is, um, yes, the question of um, access. Just imagine the same wind turbine in the middle of Siberia or the oil pipe in the ocean. And imagine the situation where you have to change the operator. How will you do it? So the devices quite often um, have a long lifespan, especially in the M2M area, so machine to machine. Yes, and can be the case the operator just disappears or the contract becomes uh, not appropriate or you're not happy with this as a manufacturer and you have to change it. So how will you do it without extra costs and efforts? This is what, we, what I call logical challenge, um, how to switch between the operators. The solution. So uh, the GSMA came with the idea of the, such definitions. So you can see it on the screen. The EUSCC or embedded SIM is a USCC which is not easily accessible or replaceable, is not intended to be removed or replaced in the terminal and enables the secure changing of subscriptions. You can see it marked um, black. So because this is actually this changing of subscriptions is uh, the way to overcome the, f the second challenge. So this is what we call remote SIM provisioning. Uh, this allows the remote switching between operators. I will go into details later on. Actually, the conditions are then um, for the as uh, so we have as a uh, card as a, with the usual USCC functions, features, or services, plus the remote sim provisioning, and this all together is called the uh, EUSCC. Please note. Uh, the EOSCC is explicitly defined not to be a soft SIM in JSMA. So it's still a, still a piece of hardware. 
So, and here we have the second challenge. Okay. Uh, now uh, we have in the definition some other parts marked black. So, um, yes, a URCC which is not easily accessible and um, or replaceable is not intended to be removed or replaced. Okay, and here we have the form factors defined by Etsy, Etsy M2M, uh, and they are used for the soldered URCC. So, um, this solves the vulnerability issue. You can see it in the picture, so this is maybe the way how it can look like. Okay, so it means the classic way of changing the uh, operator was uh, when we had the regular SIM card inserted into the mobile. Yes, and if we wanted to switch between operators, uh, we just removed it from the device and inserted the new one. Here we go. The RSP way goes a bit different. So the eSIM allows customers, or actually consumers, to store multiple operator credentials or subscriptions. Another word is also profiles. Um, yes, to store them on the device simultaneously. So it means we'll have, we can have even multi multiple of them on the device, but we still, still need to um, enable them or by switching them remotely, um, we enable this uh, subscription or profile and uh, yes, um, only one can be used at a time for the moment. Uh, an additional uh, invention of the RSP scheme is that um, uh, we sometimes we do doesn't uh, need to have a pre-installed profile inside of it uh, and because the profile can be even transferred uh, using Wi-Fi or another new technology, Bluetooth or whatever. Um, yes, yes, now I um, want to go into details. So this was just an overview to the overview. Uh, but let's, uh, before we uh, go into details of the deployment, um, let's talk a little bit uh, about the differences between eSIM and EUSC. Um, just because sometimes in the different companies, uh, uh, they make a differentiation on this. From the perspective of the GSMA, there is actually no difference because the EOCC is more the technical term, the synonyms, and um, yes, uh, the eSIM is more the marketing term. Yes, this was um, one of the definitions on the, uh, you can find on the uh, GSMA webpage. Yes, all over the same. Okay, then for the value chain, what we have right now, so the current situation, or uh, at least in uh, many countries, so especially in Germany, so it looks like uh, in the way that uh, we collect all of the parts of the which are needed for the communication, so we're a way for a chip provider, chip card module level, and so the personalization on card level will be done all of this for the SIM card. And then we have the device manufacturer and his part. And this is all provided uh, so to the um, mobile network operator, MNO. And then the, from the operator, it goes to the end customer. This is the way how we have it in Germany, at least. Uh, in the future, so it will be the case that, uh, yes, um, we have the similar value chain. So the, with a wafer chip provider and the wireless module provider, the system integrator, and uh, it goes to the customer. So especially in the M2M area, it's a big difference. Yes, and then the customer, so they can decide which operator to take. Okay, this is kind of summarizing the result and the background of the eSIM. And let's go to the next step. The eSIM allows us to tackle certain challenges. Like Olga just explained, if we don't have a lot of room to spare in our device, we put in an eSIM. If we can't access our device and change the operator because we would need to climb up a wind turbine otherwise, we would put in an eSIM. There are a lot of benefits to this. However, this was just a very tiny glimpse into the basics of the technology. So obviously there's a whole lot more to this. And if you're interested in this and you want to know more about our RSP and eSIM basics training, make sure to check the link in the description below. In any case, see you in the next one.